Vizio is a well-known brand in the TV space who focuses primarily on offering competitive products within a given price bracket. We've bought and tested almost all of Vizio's 4K TVs, and today we'll be comparing the performance to see which one you should get. Hi, I'm Brandon, a test developer at Ratings.com, where we help people find the best products for their needs. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos or check out our website for the full reviews. In this video, we'll start by looking at Vizio's lineup and discuss how Vizio compares to other brands. Then we'll look at our four best picks for Vizio TVs broken down by category. The best budget TV, the best mid-range TV, the best high-end LCD, and their most premium offering for darkroom performance. Keep in mind that this is our best picks for Vizio TVs, and the best one for you might be another model in their lineup or from a different brand entirely. Also remember that how you see the TV in this video is not the same as how I see them in person. So try not to judge them based on how they look here and instead use our measurements and reviews as a better comparison of their performance. Let's get started. In 2020, Vizio has four main categories of 4K TVs. So it's pretty easy to see where each model fits within the lineup. There's the budget oriented V series, the mid range M series, the high end P series, and lastly, there's the new Vizio OLED, which doesn't have a series moniker. There's also the D series by Vizio, which are low budget TVs with a resolution of 1080p or lower, and we haven't tested any of them. Compared to other brands, such as Samsung or Sony, Vizio TVs are priced very competitively, offering great picture quality and low input lag. Also, unlike other brands, all of Vizio's 2020 TVs are advertised to have HDMI 2.1, but the implementation isn't that great at the moment, which leads me to some of the downsides. This year especially, Vizio has had an unpolished and buggy experience with their TVs. Many of the HDMI 2.1 features, such as VRR, don't fully work yet, and we've experienced bugs and crashes in the UI that make them annoying to use. Vizio is releasing firmware updates to hopefully fix many of these issues, and we'll update our reviews as these improvements are made. But for the time being, the experience is still not ideal. Lastly, let's touch on Vizio's smart features, as they're a bit different from other brands. Unlike a traditional user interface, Vizio's SmartCast platform is more similar to a Chromecast, as it relies heavily on casting apps from your smart device. There's no actual app store to download streaming services, as you can just cast everything from your phone. That said, Vizio now offers a decent list of pre-installed apps, so it's less likely you'll need to cast anything. With that out of the way, let's get into our best picks, starting with the low end. If you're on a tight budget, then consider the Vizio 2020 V series, which is a basic 4K TV that offers a decent viewing experience. It's available from 40 inches all the way up to 70 inches, and it has excellent contrast thanks to the VA panel. Although since it's a budget unit, it lacks local dimming, so the contrast might not be as high as its peers. The brightness is also not great, so be careful what room you place it in, as you might run into glare issues. The viewing angles aren't good, so you'll get color shifting from the sides, but this is common with many other TVs as well as every LCD in Vizio's lineup, so it's to be expected. Its color gamut is also limited to the Rec. 709 color space, so it doesn't have the vibrant hues of HDR despite being able to accept an HDR signal. For motion performance, it has okay response times and very low input lag, so it's still a good pick for console gaming. It's advertised as having HDMI 2.1, but there's not much benefit to this, as the TV doesn't go beyond 60 hertz and it lacks VRR support. Overall, the V series is a decent TV for SDR content, but if you want a big step up for HDR, then check out the Vizio M8 Series Quantum. The M8 is a good mid range TV that offers a lot of benefits over the V series and doesn't command that much more out of your budget. It has local dimming support so it can produce a better image for darkroom performance, that is, if the local dimming isn't being too aggressive like we found. It also gets much brighter, so it's better at combating glare in bright rooms, although it's still not bright enough for some HDR enthusiasts. As the name implies, the M8 series Quantum is using a quantum dot layer, which is the same technology found in Samsung QLED displays. This layer creates a much wider color gamut, so it gets more saturated and vibrant hues that are often found in HDR. For motion handling, it has decent response times and supports BFI for additional motion clarity. Input lag is also great, and the TV supports VRR for 4K and 1080p, but not 1440p, at least at the time of testing. There's also the M7 and the M6 in the M-Series Quantum lineup, so pay close attention to the model number if you buy one. 
The M7 and M8 are pretty similar, except the M8 gets brighter, although it's harder to come across, so you might have to settle for the M7. The M6 is a Black Friday model and seems to be closer to the V series, but with a quantum dot layer. We haven't tested this model, so it's hard to say exactly how it performs. If you want a great TV that has an impactful HDR experience and can take full advantage of the latest consoles, then the Vizio P-Series Quantum X may be the one for you. The P-Series Quantum X is the highest end LCD offered by Vizio and it delivers top of the line picture quality. It has very good local dimming that really helps improve the contrast. And on top of that, it has excellent peak brightness in both SDR and HDR. Combined with its wide color gamut, it's sure to give an awesome and impactful HDR experience. It also has great reflection handling, so it's well suited for any bright room. For motion handling, it has great response times and supports BFI and motion interpolation. Just like the rest of the TVs in our lineup, the input lag is superb, and this TV supports 4K at 120 Hz. Although at the time of testing, we couldn't get VRR to work at this setting, but it did work at 60 Hz. It's important to note that our particular model has a red tint to the image, even after performing a calibration reset. We suspect this is due to a manufacturing defect, and we're not sure how many units will have this problem. We're still investigating this, so if you own this model, let us know in the comments if you have this issue. There's also the P-Series Quantum Non-X, which is a cheaper version of this model. Between the two, the X variant has better local dimming and gets much brighter, but our Non-X unit didn't have any red tint issues and it had better color accuracy out of the box, although this can vary between units. If you want the most premium TV from Vizio that's great for darkroom performance, then check out the Vizio OLED. This TV uses a different display technology compared to Vizio's other offerings. As the name implies, it uses an OLED panel, which consists of self-emissive pixels that can turn themselves off at an individual level. This essentially gives the TV a near infinite contrast ratio, and is one of the main selling points of OLEDs. It'll be great for dark rooms thanks to its perfect blacks that give lots of depth to the image. That's not the only benefit of OLED though, as this TV also has excellent viewing angles and perfect black uniformity. On top of that, it has a wide color gamut and superb reflection handling. It's not all roses and sunshine though, as there are some downsides to OLED displays. First, this TV doesn't get very bright, especially in comparison to the cheaper P series. It also has a fairly aggressive auto brightness limiter, so the brightness of the display changes a lot depending on the content. This is why OLEDs are geared more towards dark rooms, where contrast is king and you're not trying to overcome glare. OLED displays also have issues with temporary and permanent image retention. While we don't expect long-term burn-in to be a problem for most people, this TV did exhibit some issues with temporary image retention. Although this is the only Vizio OLED we've reviewed, so we're not sure if this is common to all units. You can learn more about this issue in our full review here. For motion handling, the OLED continues to excel thanks to its near perfect response times. Like the P-Series Quantum X, it also supports BFI and motion interpolation. The TV is advertised as having VRR, but at the time of testing, it's very buggy and doesn't really work in any case. Hopefully a future patch can fix these issues. And curiously, we measured a slightly higher input lag on this model compared to other Vizios, but it was still relatively low and won't be noticeable to most people. So that's it. What do you think of Vizio's lineup this year? Have you bought one? Let us know in the comments below. As always, you can check out all of our measurements on our website. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or become an insider on the website for access to our latest results first. Also, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So if you want to help people find the best products for their needs, have a look at our careers page. Thanks for watching and see you next time.